Hello, and welcome to the Learn to Code podcast here at One Month. My name's Chris, and in this episode, we're going to be talking about SQL, SQL. You know, it's funny. I was writing this on the board once uh, about to talk about the language, programming language, SQL. I wrote SQL, and one of my students, she, she raised her hand, and she had a question. She said, oh, yeah, I've seen that before. You know, I used to think it was called Squirrel, (laughs) which I thought was super funny, Um, but it's not called Squirrel. It's the letters SQL, and you can refer to it as SQL, or sometimes people say SQL, and sometimes it's also spelled S-E-Q-U-E-L. You may have seen it like that. SQL is a really important language. Actually, it's probably one of the most important languages because it powers almost every website and app that you've probably ever used. It's really important. And we're gonna go into that and many more things about this, the programming language SQL in this episode. I'm gonna share with you six reasons why and how to learn SQL. So we're gonna get into that in just a second. Before I do that, I just wanna answer the question, what is SQL? And kind of like, why should you care? So to tell you a little bit more, SQL is, like I said, the programming language of databases. So what is a database? Let's just talk about that for a second, okay? If you've never seen a database, just imagine uh, a spreadsheet. Ooh, rows and columns, ups and downs, right? Any kind of spreadsheet, it can be Excel or, or Google spreadsheet. You know what it looks like, just rows and columns. You put data in. That's basically the same thing as a database. There's really not too many differences. Let's talk a little bit for one second about the difference between between Excel and a SQL database, right? Just so we know what, what we're talking about because I think you understand what SQL is before even, before even coding it, right? Um, let's talk about Excel. Excel, if I had some information, like let's say I had a list of people in Excel, right? Maybe contacts. I may have the name, first name, last name, email, right? phone number. You could imagine I just have rows and rows of my contacts, right? The same thing goes when you're making, let's say, a website or you're keeping data for an app or a project. On the internet, if you log into Facebook, basically you're giving your username, your password, right? Um, Information about you, probably too much information about you if you're using Facebook, about where you live and all this kind of stuff. All of that is stored in a database. And just picture on your head, Excel, a spreadsheet. It's the same thing, except it's on a server somewhere, right? It's, it's just not in your room. It's not on your computer. And so we call it a database. It's more or less the same idea. Um, and, you know, there are some differences, but that's the, that's the main premise. So, so we have this data stored in rows and column in, columns in database, databases, <laughs> whoa, Chris, uh, in databases. And how do we access that, right? How do we go through, let's say, let's, let's think about Facebook. How do we go through all the user information on Facebook, all of the posts that are put on Facebook, all the conversations that people are having? Every time you go on Facebook or Instagram, every time you go on one of these sites and, and, and type your fingers and put data in, it's just getting stored in some rows and columns in a database. The way that the app grabs that data and adds that data is SQL. That is the language that interacts between your fingers typing and where that data is stored. It's stored in the database. The language that translates your actions into that database is the SQL language. And that's really powerful because think about how many websites you've been to on the internet. I know what I'm saying. All of them, (laughs) all of your websites on the internet (laughs) are using this technology um, to store data. And so it it comes in really handy and is interoperable, interoperable, big word. It can work with a lot of different uh, programming languages. And I want to go into that and a lot more in this episode, but I just wanted to paint a picture first about what we're talking about databases and SQL. So with that said, let's jump into the top six reasons why I love SQL, and I think that you should consider learning it. Uh, So here we go. So SQL is popular, is the first thing. Uh, Like I've mentioned, uh, a lot of, almost all different websites on the internet use SQL, right? So we can say, you know, that's basically Uber, Google, Facebook, Instagram, basically any website you can imagine is using some kind of SQL database. Uh, to, to kind of raise the stakes on the popularity, I want to share with you Stack Overflow does this annual poll of developers. They put out a poll. So Stack Overflow, if you don't know, is a site where you can go and it's basically 
the best developers or all the developers in the world, it's like Reddit for developers, are going on to Stack Overflow and answering questions, helping each other debug things, right? You can go on, it's free. I would suggest if you're new to coding, this is a great place to go. So every year they do what's called the Stack Overflow, what is it called? It's like the annual developer survey. I think it's a developer survey. If you just go to Google, if you want to do this afterwards and just do Stack Overflow annual survey, something like that, you'll see it is this multi-page survey um, that they put together with, I believe it's like over a hundred thousand developers are giving their results on this. And in this results, in these results here, let me bring it up right now. Popular. Yeah, here we go. Um, they have done a poll um, year over year asking what are the most popular technologies, right? So here's the list. I'll read it to you from top to bottom. So number one, most popular technology is JavaScript. Did you guess that? Did you think that'd be number one? Uh, number two, do you think you know what number two would be? HTML and CSS. And number three is SQL. And number four is Python. So together, these languages, JavaScript, HTML, CSS. It's, it's counting HTML and CSS as one language, which is fair because you, you end up using them together all the time. SQL, number three, and Python. You know, these together really are the foundational languages uh, that I tell you know, all my students, when, when people ask, where do I start? Basically start there, start with HTML, SQL, Python, JavaScript, probably in that order. But these are, are really the most popular and foundational languages. And uh, this is a great poll if you wanna, you know, read more about this and how these decisions were made. Um, and all that just to share with you re the real popularity of this language. This is, if you haven't heard of it or you've heard a little bit about it, you know, just be assured that this is not going anywhere. This is a really important language. So SQL is popular is really the number one takeaway um, for reasons to learn SQL. Number two, SQL is a common standard. What does that mean? Hmm. SQL is a common standard means that SQL can be used in a variety of different databases. So SQL can be used with the MySQL database, which is the most popular database that's being used on the web. SQL can be used with a Postgres database. SQL can be used with Oracle. SQL can be used with Microsoft Server uh, and Server and Database. SQL can be used with what else is there? SQLite. <laughs> Basically, this one language can be used with all these different types of databases. It's not like there are particular languages for particular databases, and so that's really cool because not only do you have access to um, MySQL, as I mentioned. For, so for example, WordPress, all WordPress sites that you've ever seen and Facebook itself, are, just so many things are on MySQL, right? So that uses SQL. But now if you go to a company that uses Oracle, same language, SQL. So SQL is a common standard. That means it can be used with um, various different databases and it also means it can be used with various programs. So if I write SQL in Python, right? So I could be writing SQL and Python together it goes with Python, SQL goes with PHP, SQL goes with Ruby. It's not like each of these programming languages all have their own database language. So you learn it once, you can use it in nearly every single situation that's out there, which is why number two on my list is that SQL is a common standard. Important to know. The number three reason to learn SQL is SQL is easy to learn, right? Uh, I taught myself SQL. I, I was 19 and I was on summer break <laughs> um, with my family. I think I was on the beach. What a nerd am I? Um, but I picked up this book because I was trying, I was just trying to build a website. You know, I was just trying to figure out how to make a website for my band. And, and, I, and I was just like, I heard this was important. And I got this book. I believe it was called Learn SQL in 10 Minutes. It might still be, it might still be out there. Um, I think the, the premise of the book is not just in 10 minutes, but if you put in 10 minutes a day for like, you know, a little bit for like a few weeks or something like that, you can learn it. And it really true, true to itself. I learned it within this one summer within, within just like a month, uh, I was able to, to just follow along and learn this language because SQL, unlike other languages like Python or JavaScript, SQL, the amount, the lexicon we should say is small. The amount of different phrases and code that you can write 
is rather small, it can fit into a book called <laughs> Learn SQL in 10 minutes. Um, you know, whereas Python and Ruby and, and these other languages, yeah, they're pretty dense. They're, they're more like by the Bible thick, you know, uh, SQL, the book is more like eh, Animal Farm by George Orwell, maybe even smaller, maybe like a pamphlet that you get at a conference. I don't know, something smaller. It's yeah, something that you could you could read on the bus <laughs> or in the summer. Uh, so SQL, it's easy to learn. It's it's uh, it's worth giving it a shot. The number four reason why you should learn SQL. I all of a sudden became like a, a talk show host here. I should be I should be counting these down. Wow, my talk show skills. What, counting them down, Chris. Come on. Um, well, we'll we'll just keep going. Number four. Uh, there are millions of rows of data. Uh, that you can access with SQL. So if you are in finance, uh, if you are in business, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you've used spreadsheets, you've used Excel before, right? This is true. Um, Excel is one of the, or has been, I would say, one of the main tools that you use in business. The cool thing with SQL is that you can use tens of millions of rows of data and, and access that data. Now with, with Excel, you can hit, I believe it's about 1 million. That's like, if you're really clean with your data, you can hit about 1 million rows. Um, with SQL, you can do easily do 10 times that. Why would you wanna do so much data? Well, these days, big data is really all the rave, you know? Um, being able to have lots of data points on your customers, in, in one case, or on geographic data, or on user movement through a site, I mean, here at one month on the site, you know, we have, we have data on, <laughs> I don't know if you want to know this, but this is the way the world works. You know, we can see every single page that, um, that our users go on, right? I can see activity as people use the site. And that's important for us because we want to know, um, we want to improve the patterns that people are, are doing. You know, if we see somebody going down a path and getting stuck, we look at that and we don't look at it on a one-on-one -on -one basis, we look at it aggregate, right? I'm looking at trends of, you know, thousands of people over a few weeks and how they're using the site. And I'm able to do that by looking at, you know, tens of thousands of rows of data that I can go through that stores every single click, every single page, all of that data gets stored. This is how the internet works. This is not anything new to us. This is how the internet works. So um, interesting to know that and interesting to know that you know, you hit limitations with something like a spreadsheet or Excel. I mean, you wouldn't really even be able to capture that data in a clean way with Excel because you'd have to, I guess, like download it or something. But, you know, having a SQL database lets you capture it in real time unless you capture tens of millions of rows of data. It's so much more powerful. And that's, that's my number four reason for why I learned SQL. All right, I got two more for you. Number five is SQL isn't going anywhere. What I mean by that is sometimes you hear about new programming languages, right? I have, I get exhausted sometimes. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I, you know, I just learned JavaScript. Now what is React? What is Flutter? What is this next new thing, <laughs> right? There's that moment where you're like, oh, there's something new. Do I, how do I learn that, right? Um, SQL has been around since 19, take a guess, 1974. Oh my God, who would have guessed that? It's been around for a long time. And in that time, it hasn't really changed all that much. That's because, like I've said, it is standardized. And because SQL's been used on nearly every single web app and in, in big financial companies, the language of it, it doesn't, it's just robust and doesn't change that much. And to really kind of, if you can imagine, like take that out and evolve that or change that, it would take a lot of different people changing all at once, right? It's not likely to be going anywhere. And really, I'd say to the contrary, if anything, it's really getting more popular. Um, Columbia Business School, um, where I teach with my co-founder, Matan Griffel, uh, announced SQL as one of the new languages of business, Python, SQL, and R. It says the new languages of business. There's a great article out there, um, which you can Google and read more about. And it's true. I've seen a lot of my students, my MBA students, they will they will apply for jobs at I don't know like Amazon, Google, you know Facebook, and as let's say business analysts or, or different jobs, right? They're being asked to know SQL. So SQL is is really important skill, and not just for developers. Which brings me to the number six reason that everyone should learn SQL. 
is that SQL is not just for developers. SQL is in high demand and it's being used by business analysts, entrepreneurs, even journalists. We have an episode here on the podcast with Melissa Lewis, who talks about how she uses Python and SQL in her job as a data journalist. Check that out for more. And she has some great stories about that. I'll share one story with you. I teach entrepreneurs and CEOs how how to get the most out of programming without actually having to become a developer, right? Like how to, how to talk the talk, how to be able to go in the database and run some SQL queries without actually having to get a CS degree, right? Um, a few years ago, I was working with a CEO in Midtown Manhattan um, for his company. For I won't mention the company, but it was a large company. And he had people giving donations. They were running a campaign for a donation. And this was this this money was coming in and he basically he wanted to do some analysis on the data that was coming in right over a thousand or two thousand so donations that were coming in and do an analysis on the data but didn't want to tax or put put more effort on the developers right he wanted access to that to look at that data so what we did was we were able to write some sql queries and go directly into the database and show some correlations between who were the highest paid donors, where were they coming from, what site were they clicking on when they found the page that they donated, right? What was the demographic information? We were able to look and analyze and really create just like a dashboard of numbers and really kind of solve these problems without, you know, this was his first day of learning SQL and we really just jumped right into these problems. And that's the kind of stuff you can do. You don't need to rely on a developer so much anymore if you have these skills and you can go right into the database and that's really powerful. And, and that's just kind of one, you know, hint at like what business analysts and entrepreneurs are doing with this data. They're looking at their users, they're looking at trends and saving a lot of money, saving a lot of time, having to kind of go back and forth through emails with developers. So I'd say that's why SQL is in such high demand and why I think it's pretty awesome. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Learn to Code podcast. If you'd like to learn SQL with me, I have a course online at onemonth.com. You can check it out there. In the course, we look at real data sets. We import and export real data sets. I'll show you how to get set up with a SQL database from scratch, and you will learn all of the fundamental SQL queries that you need to know in order to get improve your job skills, land a job you want, all that kind of stuff. Select, where, order by, we'll do all the joins, all of the stuff, all on the course. Uh, at one month, we teach Python, we teach HTML, we teach JavaScript, we teach a bunch of different courses. You can check it out there. And if you have any questions for me or anyone here, teachers at onemonth.com, say, hey, Chris, I have a question, let me know, and happy to help. If you're new to learning to code and you want to learn more, we have dozens of free episodes online. Just go to learn.onemonth.com and you can check out episodes um, such as the one I mentioned about data journalism with Python and SQL, as well as an episode I really like, why are MBAs learning Python? So check all these out. They're all for free on our site and on iTunes and Spotify. Check all that out. If you like it, I'd love if you wrote a review. That's always nice. It always really helps. Um, But thank you so much for listening. This has been another episode of Learn to Code podcast and best of luck learning the code. Have a good one.